This is my home server. I use it mostly as a Plex media server, game servers like Foundry and Minecraft, as well as a VM station to test out different operating systems, Docker containers, and similar apps. I also have my NAS on it, where I store 95% of all my files so I can access anything on my desktop and on my laptop, no matter where I'm in the house. So if I'm editing a video here in the office on my desktop, I can seamlessly move that workflow to my laptop and go work downstairs in a recliner for a change of pace. I've been having some crashing issues on it lately, and I found that this might be the perfect time to change out some hardware to better suit my needs. So let's talk about what the computer has now, and then we'll get into what we'll be changing. The server right now is using an old iBuyPower pre-built case I got for free from a relative. I started using it just because it had a lot of hard drive bays and I didn't want to spend any money on a case at the time. But this case is big, old, oddly shaped, and was falling apart even before I got it. I originally had a bunch of cheap fans in this, but I changed all of them to Noctua once I got tired of how loud the server was. I don't know if you can notice, but all of these fans are actually PWM CPU cooler fans salvaged from old Noctua CPU coolers. So I'm using them with fan splitters, and while it gets the job done and it's pretty quiet, I want to try to use less salvaged parts and maybe build something with a little purpose. The CPU I'm currently using is an 8-core Intel Xeon E5-2690. This came from an old server and was purchased pretty cheap on eBay. The only problem is that most motherboards that support this kind of cheap CPU are few and far between anymore. So I had to pick up one of those salvaged Chinese motherboards that support X79 chipsets that cost me like $80 not really happy about that one. I believe this is the reason why my system has been crashing recently, so it's got to go. The CPU cooler is a no-name LGA 1150 cooler I found that is small, loud, and ugly. The one reason I actually do like this motherboard is because it supports ECC Reg RAM. So I'm currently using 32 gigs of ECC Reg DDR3 RAM, just some leftover from an HP server somewhere. To explain it simply, ECC RAM has the ability to autocorrect any kind of RAM errors, so it is usually a little bit more stable and consistent. The GPU is an old 2 gig AMD card that is purely being used to get a display out if I ever need to troubleshoot the bare metal. That's it. Moving on. For the power supply, I used the cheap 500 watt Thermaltake power supply I got on Amazon. It's got a 5 year warranty, and while it isn't super high on that there fancy PSU tier list, it's been working fine so far without any issues. My cache drive is a 500 gig Crucial 2.5 inch SSD. Nothing special, but if you're unfamiliar, the cache drive is just there to intermediate file transfers between hard drives. So if I want to send 100 gigs from one hard drive to the other, it actually sends it to the cache drive first so you can take advantage of those fast SSD speeds. Then it will send all that data over to your hard drives while you're sleeping. It's actually a really great feature that has absolutely came in clutch when moving large chunks of data that I needed right then. As for my fast storage, I have a 2.5 inch 2 terabyte SanDisk SSD that I use for my active storage. So if I want to edit a video or a podcast, or have files that I constantly use and access, I keep it on here. Then for my slow storage, I have an 8 terabyte Seagate drive for my parity and two more of the exact same drives for storage, making my effective usable capacity, not including the cache, is about 18 terabyte of storage. Now I bet you're wondering, where's the boot device? Well, the system I'm running is actually Unraid, which boots from a USB device. It's so lightweight and easy to use that they actually force you to use a USB device to launch it. I'm using an old ass 8 gigabit SanDisk Cruiser that I got for free as a part of my orientation at a job in 2014. Unraid technically only needs less than 2 gig, but who can find one of those these days? Now let's talk about the upgrades I'll be doing. Firstly, this old case has got to go. I'm sick of looking at it and its shape is so big and awkward, it doesn't even properly fit its spot in my closet. I've upgraded to the top tier ATX case, a Fractal Define R5. This is highly regarded as the bee's knees of ATX server cases. Fractal has such a good reputation of being well manufactured, easy to build in, and quiet that this was an absolute no-brainer. There's tons of space for extra hard drives that I can build in this machine for years to come as long as I don't change up the form factor. I'll be using the stock Fractal fans that come with it. They're pretty good, adding another one for good measure. I'm kind of tired of using these CPU cooler Noctua fans, so if I need more fans in the future, I'll probably buy more Fractal ones just to match, or I'll go with something premium and quiet. For the internal hardware, I wanted to try to use less old parts. Not new, just less old. Namely, get away from old server components for the time being, and upgrade the DDR4. I didn't like the idea that if I needed a simple part for my machine, like a new RAM stick, I have to go hunt down some seller on eBay and pay the same price I could get a DDR4 stick new on Amazon. For the motherboard, I'm using a standard gigabyte board that supports this chipset, 
which has bent and missing pins. I bought this from someone for $10 shipped, knowing there were a few bent pins, but the machine worked perfectly anyway. Thinking I could bend a few pins back and put in a rig for someone, I bought it. But upon further inspection, I found that not only were many of the pins bent, some were completely broken off. And I fixed the ones I could, and all the stress tests came normal after, but I wouldn't feel right selling this to someone or even giving it away to someone I care about, to be honest. So when thinking about what to do with it, I realized it's kind of perfect for my server at this moment. It has four RAM slots, plenty of SATA ports, and the expansion's good enough, and even has an M.2 slot. So to pair with it, I got an i7-8700. And while I could have gotten a 9700 and got some extra cores and performance, I had this 8700 left over from a previous build, and so it was the obvious choice. For RAM, I again went with what I had, which was four sticks of 3600 MHz Oloid RAM, totaling 32 gigs. I know the speed is totally overkill for this, but I had it on hand for a PC build I was planning, and so it's going in. For the CPU cooler, I'm gonna go with an ID cooling air cooler, which is like a cheap one on Amazon, but I'm taking out the fan, I'm gonna add one of my Noctua 120mm fans. It should be nice and quiet and save me some money. For the GPU, I've decided to upgrade from just having a display out to actually getting an NVIDIA card. The benefit of this is I can use it for fast transcoding and Plex, and also I think it'd be cool to have an emulation virtual machine with GPU pass-through, as well as opening up more possibilities with the server. So I went with a GTX 1066 gig, which is more than enough for me at this time, but it still supports the newer gen NVIDIA NVENC encoder. For PSU, I went with this EVGA 650 watt gold rated PSU I got from EVGA B-Stock. I wanted something that was a higher tier PSU, but wouldn't break the bank. And this checked all the boxes. For storage, I've decided to upgrade my case drive to a one terabyte, and I might as well make it an M.2 drive to reduce another SATA cable from the system. So I went with the Western Digital one terabyte N350, it's not the best, but it was cheap, and since this is just a case drive and an older motherboard, I'm not too worried. My 2TB SanDisk NAS drive is going to stay the same for now. In the future, I might upgrade my motherboard, and I would upgrade this to an NVMe Gen 3 or 4, but for now, it's working perfectly well, no need to change. Now on to the slow storage. I decided to buy a pair of two Seagate 18TB Exos Enterprise drives. The Exos drives are for huge professional servers, and while you pay a premium for them in most cases, they don't sell drives in this capacity that aren't EXOS Enterprise, so I guess that makes sense. One of these drives is going to replace my parity, and one of them is going to replace one of my 8TB storage drives. I'm actually going to remove one of the 8TB drives and give it to my friend Matt, as he's really looking for a large capacity hard drive for his personal rig. With Unraid, your parity drive has to be equal or bigger than your largest storage drives, so by making my parity drive an 18TB drive, I can add as many 18TB or smaller drives as I want in the future really keeping it flexible. With these upgrades, it will bring my total storage capacity to 55 terabytes of raw storage, and after losing 18 terabytes of parity, bringing the actual usable storage to 37 terabytes. If I want to add any more in the future, I can just grab an 18 terabyte, plug it in, and I'll be ready for redundant storage. I won't have to lose any more storage due to redundancy. Now, I actually upgraded the USB drive as well, but for good reason. The USB I was using had two fatal flaws. One, the housing was mostly made of plastic, which has been wearing down over the years due to heat and other factors. And two, this is a USB 3.0 drive. Unraid actually suggests using a 2.0 flash drive because there's no performance increase using anything else, and they've seen people have less crashes and issues with USB 2. So I found this Kingston 2.0 32GB Traveler flash drive that is like a full metal housing. It's all one big chunk of metal, which will certainly help it last longer. And it's 2.0, just like Unraid suggests. Sweet! And that's the game plan for now. All the updates I'm making to my home server. I'm super excited to put this together, so let's montage this. Hey guys, Future Jason here. So while I fully intended to use that EVGA power supply, the B-Stock one, after testing it before installing it, it didn't work. It would click on for a second and, and that's it. I'm in the process of RMAing it back to EVGA. So in the meantime, I've changed it to a 700 watt thermal take power supply. Okay, back to the video.
Okay, so the build is complete and ready to go. It actually took me many days to do this because replacing a drive is no easy feat. It requires you to rebuild the data from scratch, which took me 30 hours per drive. And of course, the power went out in my region halfway through and I wasn't using my UPS at the time, so <laughs> great stuff. But it works now. Everything is waxed, vaxed, and ready to party. I'm gonna put it in my, its final resting place and show you what I did with the place. The closet is kind of a dumping ground for me, but I at least wanted to keep this area clean and organized to be less of an eyesore. I try my best to keep the server area clean, but with the limited space and weird shaped case, it's kind of difficult to keep it all looking good. I usually run the server headless, but I like having a monitor here as a backup in case I ever need to troubleshoot the bare metal. I fixed it to the wall along with the network switch to clean up just a little bit. I also cable organized just a little bit better to make it seem a little more tidier. I'm super happy with how everything is working right now and how it turned out. I don't expect this to be my end game server build, but it's pretty great for now. And I even have some ideas for how I will upgrade this in the future. I think I'll eventually change to a full sized ATX board just for some more expandability. And I'll probably upgrade to something with eight cores and 16 threads. I'll also probably expand the NAS disk to an NVMe drive for faster read write speeds. But for now, I'm really happy with how this came out. And I hope you enjoyed watching me upgrade this machine. If you are interested in knowing where to buy any of these items I've talked about today, I'm going to have literally everything listed in the description with links with where to get it. And if you like this video, please do me a favor and actually hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. If you want to listen to me talk about video games, you can check out our podcast, The Dribbler Gaming Podcast. I'll put a link down in the description with that as well. Thanks for watching. See ya.